a sudden, labor camp with 600 families had been weeks without clean water. Overnight, when they found out that Miami Beach, a tourist attraction, a lot of wealthy people live there, less than 24 hours they had Air Force jets flying chlorine injectors from Georgia to make sure that the water was clean for Miami Beach, but they hadn't done it for 600 farm workers, Latinos, in weeks, in weeks. So we had a congressional investigation come in and say, why is that? That you couldn't do that for this small group of people. So they finally went down there and they also got chlorine injectors. They cleaned up the well. But I thought while I was being there that how much it showed what people thought about farm workers, what they thought about people of color, that unless you stood up and you advocated for yourself, nothing would ever change. And that began to get farm workers then to get involved with the union because they saw some very tangible results. And no sooner had we gotten through with that, that then we found out that the uh, Florida Farm Bureau had introduced a bill to do away with union hiring calls, which we had established in California as a result of the grape strike, as a result of the lettuce strike, because that was a way of doing away with the power of the labor contractors or the crew leaders, as they call them in Florida. And that meant that instead of them hiring people and uh, making a profit off of them go, uh, being uh, contracted for with the uh, individual growers. Instead, they would go through a union scenario, eliminate favoritism, el uh, eliminate the abuses that come with the labor contractor system. And, but the growers thought that was absolutely horrible. So they introduced a bill in the state legislature to outlaw. And so we got busy then on a campaign to fight against this bill None of us had ever done legislative campaigns. I wasn't even a citizen then, so I didn't even know about all of that. And so we started and, and we got people involved and we started a letter writing campaign to the legislature and we started making visits to them, basically pointing out the abuses of the crew leader system and saying this bill would basically uh, formalize this relationship forever and there not be anything that workers could do except live under this slave-like conditions. While we were doing this campaign, then there was a newspaper report that came out saying that there was a crew leader that had been arrested because he was keeping 30 people in slave-like conditions in the homestead area where the chlorine uh, issue had had occurred, the, the typhoid case. And the way it worked is this crew leader would go out and recruit people that had some, uh, some problems, primarily people that had alcohol or substance abuse problems. Take them into the labor camp, had guards outside. They would tell them that uh, they would go to work. They would get, uh, said, this is how much you're gonna be paid. But then from their paycheck, they would deduct room and board. They would deduct food, which they had to do because they couldn't go to store. They weren't free to leave the camp. And after all was said and done, they basically wound up with zero paycheck. And we thought that that was a perfect example of the abuses of the crew leader system. So we went out and, and to look for some of these workers and we found a worker, his name was Theodore Johnson, African-American. And he uh, interviewed him and he told us about all of this that had been going on with this crew leader system. So we took him up to Tallahassee, the state capital, and got him on the, on, the, uh, on the witness list of this committee that was hearing this bill. You know, they didn't, uh, the legislators that were hearing the bill were poised to pass it. They didn't see any problem with anything. Then when Theodore got up, was called up, and he sat down to testify. And he testified to the abuses that he had experienced, the treatment he and other workers had received, 
and there was a hush in the hearing room as he testified. And after he got done, then you could tell that the tide had turned, that the majority support for that bill had evaporated, and later on that day, the author withdrew the bill. So that was a big victory, and it was also a first experience for us because we had never done anything like that. 